So, to continue, I have my three levels of information here. I can put my square on here. This is a square, but this is also a square. I can put my square on here and I can see the vibration of 90 degrees. 90 times four is 360. And see how that comes together and how these energies link up. A square is often called a hard angle because it presents a challenge. So when planets are things, are squared, it shows the progression, almost like a, a times table chart. Uh, it shows the progression of things. When a, in mathematics, when, when, a, when five is squared, you get 25. So 25 is a higher vibration of five. Just like six squared is 36, which is a higher vibration of six. And you can see that 25 has five at the end. And you can see that 36 has six at the end. So they are truly what they are. So that's the square. And I can put the trine on here. I'll move this because I don't, I don't have a hole in that. And it has a hole there. So my trine shows me positive aspects. As opposed to the square showing me hard aspects. This, this angle of 120 degrees is a harmonious connection between things. Not just planets but a harmonious interaction between anything. It can be even a harmonious interaction between words. Word, sound, power. Word and sound sometimes equal each other. And sometimes time and space are squared, meaning this angle, they meet at this centerpiece. And when things meet at this centerpiece, you know that uh, something is complete in order for it to make this sharp turn. So, some other things I have and that I use in, in divining what the universe is saying are angles are aspects, and of course this is the nine-pointed star, the Enneanad, that's the Greek word for nine. But this will show me each point that is 40 degrees apart from each other because nine times 40 is 360. So when I'm dealing with a specific point on this 360 degree circle, I might need to see what other points are touching the same for the septad or the seven pointed star all hand drawn I, I, I take some time like to make these angles correct because those are energy lines you know what I mean so the seven and when they are 51.3 degrees apart they are all vibrating, well, whatever, meaning planets or stars, are kept capturing the vibration of the seven. And we know seven is a holy number. Seven days, seven musical tones, and so on, seven angels. And this is the hexagram, or the hexad, which is showing me how many degrees, which is showing me 30 degrees a piece. 60 degrees rather, I'm sorry. 60 degrees a piece. The octagon or the octad is showing me 
45 degrees. And what, it may only be two things here that showed me 45 degrees. And here we have the pentad or the pentagram, which is in, it's the number that is in phi ratio. Phi ratio is how plants grow. It's also how your hand is spaced apart. The length of your arm in comparison to your body, the length of your navel, the distance between your navel and your feet and the navel and your head is all in phi ratio, which is giving you this, this uh, mystical number called uh, 1.618. Called, they call it the golden ratio. And the pentagram, which is used to invoke things or to banish things, uh, is very, very, very powerful. It's a symbol of power. And if you realize that five is the exact equilibrium between the numbers one and nine, then, um, then that, that should show you that this is a, a, a powerful pivot point powerful pivot point of course I have 180 degrees which I don't need to show you because you do understand that and the five is 72 degrees between each of these points 72 times 5 360 then I even have more abstract aspects like this one which is showing uh, zero or one degree, 180 degrees, 144 degrees, and 216 degrees. This is show a different har harmony between planets or even words. And I'll show you that. So at this point, I would like to bring out the planets. And to do this correctly, I'm going to pull up a chart and then I'm going to plot the planets for today in this exact time. So we have the sun at 24 degrees Taurus. We have the moon at 24 degrees Aquarius, which is already an aspect right there. If you realize that Taurus and Aquarius are known as the fixed stars and they make a, 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 a grand square, the fixed stars, the, um, excuse me, the fixed signs which are Taurus, Aquarius, Leo, and Scorpio. They form 90, uh, 90 degree angles, which is a square around the 360 degrees. Next, Venus. Venus is at 21, excuse me, I got to have to do Mercury first, five degrees Gemini. Venus, 21 degrees, Gemini. Mars is next. Mars, one degree, Pisces. Set, Jupiter, 27 degrees, Capricorn. Saturn, one degree Aquarius. Uranus, 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 uh, seven degrees Taurus.
Neptune, 21 degrees Pisces. Pluto, 24 degrees Capricorn. And then the north and the south nodes. North and the south node in the moon is when, when the moon crosses the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the flat angle in where planets and planets go above the ecliptic, which is the flat plane of, of, the, of the galaxy. It's an entrance and an exit. The, the north node is taking in things and the south node is releasing things. You could think of it as the mouth of a dragon and the, and the back end of a dragon. Is what is eaten, could be your mouth, and what is released. What you're adding in and what you're t taking out. So, and they are always opposite of each other. And these are, the north and the south node are about to switch from a polarity of Cancer and Capricorn to a polarity of Gemini and, Sa and Sagittarius. That's what's going on now. So, which they have switched, of course, which is 29 degrees Gemini, 29 degrees Gemini. In the last two weeks, they have switched and 29 degrees uh, Sagittarius. And th that completes all of the planets that I use to see the state of what is going on in my surroundings, in, inside myself and outside myself, whether it's in my private life or in my public life, in the, in the life of the world or in my personal life. So this is how everything is laid out. Now, to go back to these, you can, at this point, you can see how these angles will link up over the course of a year or the course of a day even sometimes. So that's that. Now, where did I come from? The second question. As I grew, I began to understand that not only did I come from my mother, as we all do, but there's another part, a quintessential part of yourself that some say has a different origin. They call it the spirit. They call it the soul. Some people call it the consciousness. Something greater than your physical body. Uh, the inside you as opposed to the outer you. So when I began to ask myself the questions of where did I come from, and being as though I'm a Pisces, I see, I began to consider my place in the universe or my place in the grand scheme of things. Over the course of my learnings and my journeys, I found that astrology what is called astrology was the best way for me to explain not only my origins but the origin of many things and all things that I may consider uh, in the pursuit of of that I began to write and to create a system which will which would for myself explain things that may have been unexplainable without that system so i'll show you a few things and how i use it 
So, here I have a carefully worked out chart, a well, list is a better word to, to say it. And basically, I needed to know what each degree of the 360 degree circle or the wheel within a wheel, within wheel, within a wheel was saying. So I took language, letters, and I turned them into numbers so that I could divine what something was saying, what a situation was saying to me at a specific point in time. I have used it to help myself. I have used it to help others, maybe unbeknownst to them, what I was particularly using, a system of divination, uh, an oracle. The validity of this system is just as valid as what other people may use to divine. There's many ways to divine. You have tarot cards, you have runes, you even have bibliomancy. And bibliomancy is when you take any book, but it could be the Bible, Biblio just means book, but it could be the Bible. And let's say you're in a time of stress and you need guidance. You take that book, you say your prayer or your meditation or your affirmation, and you just open that book to whatever page you were attracted to. You could take it further and put your finger, like you could close your eyes and put your finger on the page and read the verse that your finger landed on, landed on without you knowing. So that's a system of divination. I've come up with a system of divination. Here I have each zodiac house and I have words attached to each degree. from one to 360. So what I would do in the case of today, it would basically look like this. And these, these are my, my grid paper. This is the only paper I write on because it's, it's uh, charged in a certain way with the grids. So I would take the degree and on this particular uh, harvest scope that I did for a day, I have, let's say I have uh, mercury at 342 degrees, but the words attached to it say, we will do whatever is necessary. Another degree I have at 334, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So these are phrases that each letter equals to the degree of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. So when I'm looking at planets, I'm looking at what they are saying to me in numbers, but I translated it into words. So each of these are saying something. Now, I'll, I'll give you a coincidence. And to show you how this, this works without you even having to make it work. So I'll take a pen. And something I noticed yesterday, and I knew I would bring this up. So I'll take a pen and just to show you how things link up 
synchronicity wise. Yesterday I saw, you might not be able to see this either. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. But yesterday I saw that Venus was at 81 degrees out of the 360 degrees. This is early in the morning last night. But I already knew, uh, you can't see it, but I already knew that Venus equals the numbers when you do 22, 5, 14, 21, and 19, they equal 81. So we're experiencing something right now. Uh, uh, a synchronicity, um, a coincidence, for lack of better words, 81 is what the word Venus equals, but also 81 is where Venus is in the zodiac. It's 81 degrees today and yesterday. Well, Venus takes 225 days to go through the zodiac to make this whole complete circle. So the coincidence of today being the day that we record this and that Venus is 81 degrees and Venus equals 81, that's like time and space squaring each other, equaling each other at the same time, squaring each other and meeting up the y axis and the x axis the y and the z axis that's how they say it time and space equaling up at the same point in time and space a synchronicity so that's 81 but not only is venus 81 the word square is 81 s19 Q17, U21, A1, R18, and E5 equal 81. Venus equals 81 and is square. So, I would like to know if Venus is square with anyone. If anything is square to Venus today. And something is square. Venus at 21 degrees Gemini and Neptune at 21 degrees Pisces. So what is that saying to me right now? Twenty one degrees Gemini. I go on my list and I find Gemini. Square, Venus, source, and always are the keywords I have here. So that's reminding me that this is always correct. Always. Numbers don't lie. 21 degrees Pisces. 21 degrees Gemini is 81 degrees of the 360. 21 degrees Pisces is 351 degrees, almost to the end. And Neptune is in its home of Pisces because Neptune rules Pisces. So 351. Here I have the holy language of God is in numbers. When you take those words, those letters, that's what equals 351. So I have a square with the holy language of God is in numbers. So all of that is showing me what's going on today. And not only today, but the time that we're in. Somewhere around December of last year, I started to realize that Saturn and, and Pluto were about to conjunct on uh, January, 20, January 12th, 
at 22 degrees Capricorn. Not that I could see any of what today, these days would bring with the virus and such, but I could see that it was a rough time coming because Pluto is, is like an atomic bomb. It's like a nuclear bomb. Wherever Pluto is, it's upheaval and renewal. Upheaval that brings regeneration. So Pluto being in Capricorn, Capricorn rules governments, public standing. It rules the public as opposed to cancer, which rules the private, the home. Capricorn is the outer world. So when I saw that Pluto was traveling through Capricorn since 2008, and as soon as Pluto came into Capricorn in 2008, there was a financial crash, the Great Recession. So when I saw that Saturn, which is the planet of time, the gatekeeper, the taskmaster, the teacher, the planet that rewards you or punishes you every 30 years because Saturn takes 30 years to go through the 360 degrees making angles of 90 degrees, 45 degrees all along the way. So when these two came together it spelled out something ominous, though I had no idea how ominous. No idea at all. But the upheaval of government is what I saw. And that's what we're living in now. And not only that, the planet Uranus, Uranus, is in the house of Taurus. Taurus rules money, finance, financial system. Uranus is this planet of revolution, revolutionary thinking, the internet. So with your Uranus in the house of Taurus says that the monetary system will be transformed over the course of his journey in the house of Taurus. Not only that, the 84 years that it takes Uranus to go through transformation, go through the Zodiac, each time it reaches a certain point, there is a revolution. 1789, Uranus caused the, not caused, but was assigned to be read for the American Revolution. 84 years later after that was the Civil War, 1865, 1860, through that time. Next 84 years, 1956, it was a different kind of revolution in America. You had the civil rights movement, which was a war in its own way. The next time Uranus, 84 years from 1956 or so, is going to bring us into 2033, where, where I'm seeing that this world will be drastically different. So Uranus is the, is the planet of your lifetime because most people will live about 84 years. So they will only see one Uranus return, if lucky. Saturn is every 30 years, 
So you have a Saturn return around the age of 28 to 30. Another Saturn return around 58 to 60. And then you have quarter marks. All of these things are speaking about you. I don't speak about astrology in the sense of something outside of yourself or something that you read in the back of a newspaper. I speak of astrology as a science, as mathematics, timing, things coinciding at the same time. All of these things before me have shown me my path from beginning of asking who am I, the middle of the road of where did I come from? And on to the last question of where I am going. These are the same questions you must ask yourself. And hopefully you can experience the peace and deliverance that I have. So some of these things may vibrate with you. Some of these things are the same things you're thinking about. Or you may have questions as to your place in the universe or your place in society. These are tools which will help you if you learn to read the tools, just like reading anything else. Read the stars, read the planets, read what's in front of you. The next question and the last question where am I going?